I'm uh, super excited. This is uh, a dream come true. I guess uh, when you start as a, as a former player and a kid in a candy store wiping floors and wanted to, wanted to be in a, an elite, see the elite players play, um, there's all, all levels and all steps that you need to go through. And I think from a player to being a professional to finally getting to represent my country to as an assistant coach to doing the groundwork to work with Andre and Commonwealth Games to be able to now become the head coach of the Adelaide 36ers. I think uh, this is a great fit for everybody involved. And I look at our, our roster and I already see it's, it's built for success. I think JVG and Grant have done a great job. Of, I spoke with them about their, their vision um, and where they see this, this club going and it all aligns with what I'm about, uh, not only on the floor but off the floor. CJ, what's your, what's your vision for the side? We talk about success. What are some of your hallmarks about being a coach and what would you want from your players? Well, as, as players, everyone talks about a style of play and everyone around would like to know what is CJ going to bring to the table. And I think it starts with uh, accountability. Um, when you have elite athletes the way they are and where they're created today, it's making sure that as an organisation that we keep accountability first. I'm, I'm all about effort. Uh, if you bring the effort every single day, then you will, you will be rewarded, not only at practice, but also in the community. Uh, and then it comes about communication. It's the number one thing that we got to have. It's, it's one thing that my wife always, she's always pushing forward. Of We need to have this relationship and understanding. I understand that she's female and I'm male, so there's always the, uh, the things that we can agree to disagree on. Uh, but overall, it's that side of things is first and foremost, and then it becomes about uh, how we bring this all together. and. There's a style of play which you need structure, and we see this in business world every day. But we've seen our players and elite players of the past, from the, the Derek Ruckers, uh, excuse me, it's not the Derek Ruckers, it is the Brett Mars <laughs> that have played here uh, in Adelaide, the homegrown heroes and guys like Catalini that came through the ranks that have learned how to play not only structured basketball, but being able to play, have freedom to be able to create plays and make plays the way that. DJ Johnson does in today's game. He's an outstanding player and try not to take away everyone's strengths and make them become robots, but it's the accountability and the defensive effort that you need to see every night to be able to compete and be able to be successful in every game. What's easier, coaching or a marriage? Uh, I like to say uh, coaching. <laughs> uh, I've been married 20, almost 20 years and um, that's a process every day. So it's... Um, yeah, 20, I tell my wife we got 24 hours to be mad at me and then we got to move on because we don't get back the past. Uh, how did this all come about, CJ? Ah, yeah, that's a question. Well, it, it came about at first a, a, a conversation and a call from JVG and um, can we can we talk? And I was pretty excited thinking that he was. We got, I just met Kai Soto and ran into him and JVG and at, a, at the stadium and talked about how he was one of the guys that I wanted to bring to the Brisbane Bullets. And putting his name forward and following a guy like that, but and, and then it gradually grew to uh, meeting Grant and talking with Grant and hearing their vision and their views on where they want this team to go, uh, what they've been building over time and how they how they see this going forward, uh, and then it became about how do we join this together? If our stars align, then it's good. And if you know anything about my career and you've you've seen that throughout um, everywhere that I've been, it's I didn't always go there. It wasn't always about the money. It was it was about winning and being successful, and then doing it the right way. That you leave a place better than when you got there. And if we can all do that, and we can all strive to be great human beings, then we'll go a long way. So, do you coach like you play? Then? I like it. I think I like to think every every coach has a little bit of how they play in them. Um, as you know, I had a lot of swag on the floor. I like to say and um, carry myself a certain way. But you also got to believe and back yourself. And some of these kids. There's that mental challenge of, you know, is there going too much over the top and is there too much that I, I know there's more in you? Uh, how are we able to tap into that and get that out of you? Because we have the balance of young players and veteran players and you've got to mix that and international players and making sure that everyone feels a piece, uh, feel involved and that they can grow in this game. CJ, you spent so many years terrorising the 36ers. What it's like to be now finally one of, one of them, really. Um, it's... Honoured to be a part of the, a great tradition and a great culture that is set before. Uh, Adelaide was the first club in the NBL that had their own stadium. 
And when you go back to knowing the roots of the game of basketball, to know that they were into it to grow, uh, their fan base, I, I equivalent to New York Knicks, of they've always been loyal, they've always come out, they always support. It's one of the, the spots where you love to play when you're an opponent because they're going to bring the best out of you. But now that I'm here, I hope that, that we scare and terrorise everyone that walks through that door uh, before they even step on the floor. What excites you about this squad? You mentioned a couple of names. Who, who do you look at and go, yeah, I really want to use them and utilise their, them this season? Well, you, you start with the veterans and the guys that have been here. And then you, and that's DJ. Obviously, Isaac hum Humphreys is re returning player as well. And then you got to go to where it starts if you're going to win a championship. Mitch McCarron, he's been a leader, he's a winner. Uh, he brings in uh, a, a lot of resources that uh, <clears throat> this team and I can utilise and take advantage of. And then you, you go to your, your strengths and your powers. Of, you, you've got young talent in Mo King. Uh, that's a, a next star that wants to elevate and be in the NBA to your defensive players and your toughness in, in the Sunday ditch uh, that are all about the club and being one. It's been a bit of a revolving door, the roster, for a, for a number of years, but now we're seeing more and more 36 is tied to, to longer contracts. Does the idea for a, a project over a number of years of success excite you? Is that something that you would embrace? Definitely. I think uh, in, in any, any time that you're involved in a club, you want to have a chance to see it grow and be a, be a part of it from from the ground level. But we're, right now, it's you've also got to be adaptive in this world today, right? We, we're changing, we're in COVID. If we're, if we're not able to adapt and, and grow with the changes along um, and put everyone in a spot so that we can be successful. CJ, the club, the club has come close under previous coaches. Yes. I've seen Conor Henry has only here for a short term. Why do you think you can break through where others might not have been able to have the success they wanted? I don't feel like I'm that far removed from my playing days, and I think that uh, there's a there's always a balancing act. Like it's as always, it's not about me. It's about the Adelaide Thirty Sixers, but it's how we bring this all together. And when you've got youth that have also been told that they're going to be an elite player, and then now you might have to sit five minutes or I disagree with where you're at, and I need to see the improvements in these areas and reward you as the accountability and, and the effort that you give me every single day and not being afraid to take something away but also give you a pat on the back and give you a hug when you need one. It's um, showing that we're, again, as an organisation, we support you, I love you, as the organisation does, and we're going to grow together and help you achieve what you want as an individual but also us collectively as a team. We're in, um, obviously, yeah, in a of you as a player, grew up watching your old man in WA as well. Do you lean on... Know what what he was able to do? Do you get advice from him? And I mean, some of the guys he played with were, yeah, you know, some of the who's who of the NBL. Really, do you draw on that experience with your dad and those sorts of guys? Um, I I do. I, I go from from when I first was able to touch a ball to from the Andrew Gays to the the, the the veterans of the Leroy Loggins, you know, playing here in Adelaide to the Al Greens. Um, but it's also about the moment and the games changed obviously from the time that they played to where it is now. Uh, and knowing that there's a lot more resources out there uh, and taking advantage of, of what's put out in front of us. Um, I'm looking forward to getting with my staff and implementing that, but I, I do listen to them. Not saying I take all the information that they give, as I learned from Andre. I've, I've been with Andre uh, almost 10 years, five, five, when I, six, five as I played and five as a coach. So hearing him and how he deals with uh, different and difficult situations, um, they always come up, but it's how you handle them and how you are as a person. And, how you, as a club, stand for? What's the first order of business for you when you get your feet under the desk? Well, the first is to meet the whole organisation. I think it, you, you only grow forward by having trust and, and building that trust and equity within within your organisation, uh, reaching out to all the players and my coaching staff and getting on the same page of finding out when we're going to start and what we're going to do and how we go about our business. Confidence doesn't seem like it's something that's ever really plagued mm -hmm. you, but why are you confident that, that you're ready now to, to step up and be a senior coach? Look at our team. Uh, I think my credentials, as I said, have been. I've done works uh, and battles before, uh, not just on the floor but off the floor. Overseas, I've applied my trade, not just here in Australia. Um, I think I've helped a lot of people um, advance in their careers as individual players and collectively as a team. And I'm not here to blow my horn. It's more of the proof is in the pudding, right? And so I'm looking forward and excited to get to work.